Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of Riyadh al Salahin. I always say U.S. Salahin for some reason. <laughs> so forgive me if I have that mental blockade. So we're in the section of unlawfulness of oppression. Go ahead and listen to this as you stare at some bugs, stare at the sky, you know, water your garden, chase a rabbit, whatever it is you're going to do. Yeah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's begin. Abdullah bin Amr bin al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, A Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hands the Muslims are safe, and a muhajir immigrant is the one who refrains from what Allah has forbidden. Okay, another important one. Tongue and hands, not using it to transgress against each other. The tongue one, verbal stuff, is hard sometimes. Really can get kind of hard. We all got to work on that. I'll try to do my best. But sometimes it can get very difficult with certain people. Commentary. The hadith shows that a true Muslim is one who does not do any harm to others overtly or covertly. Similarity to the true muhajir is one who avoids disobeying Allah. Thus, if a person leaves his hearth and home to emigrate to some other place, but does not save himself from sins, his emigration is of no avail. Aha! Hearth, if you don't know what that is, it's um your fireplace. You know, your bonfire area. Usually when you say hearth, gather around the hearth. In English, that really means a gathering spot where there's warmth and, you know, stories are being exchanged. It's a place of community. So before you decide to immigrate, you better make sure you're going to rectify your affairs. Very important. Abdullah bin Amr al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. A man named Kir Kira, who was in charge of the personal effects of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, passed away. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He is in the hellfire, for some people went to his house looking for its cause and found there a cloak that he had stolen. Oh, I think I remember that story. He was one of the soldiers and he took something. Let's see if it's the same guy. The Hadith shows that stealing a breach of trust fall in the category of major sins for which one can be consigned to hell. Okay, stealing and breaching of trust. Now, let me turn that down. What's interesting here, theft. Now, because of the leftist soft position on crime, you can look this up. CVS, Walgreens in San Francisco, jewelry shops getting smash and grabs. The data is there, even though journalists that are left-wing have been trying to minimize it. But business owners, especially if they are from India, Korea, China, basically, you know, or Algeria, Morocco, we have some of them as well. They're very upset, right? That they came all the way here to America, they have a business, and that under leftist Democrat leadership, crime has gotten out of control. And People like AOC, Ilhan Omar, and others defunding the police, right? Having this woke talking point has led to much theft and stealing. Now people can literally just walk into a CVS, steal, and then walk out. It's amazing when you see for the first time garbage bags. People ride in on bicycles, steal a bunch of stuff, and leave. It's literally insane. In Vallejo, which is not too far away, some stores have preemptively closed. Oh, so here it's like as a Muslim we have a higher ethical code, right? Stealing is wrong. Avoid it. You know, it just goes to show that not all cultures are equal. Not all philosophies are equal. Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Time has completed its cycle and has come to the state of the day when Allah created the heavens and the earth, 
the year consists of 12 months, of which four are inviolable. Okay, let's see. We have time, months, three of them consecutive. Duhul Katada, Duhul Hijjah, and Muharram and Rajab. The month of Mundar tribe, which comes between Jumada and Shaban. What month is this? We said. Allah and his messenger know better. The Prophet, peace be upon him, remained silent for some time until we thought he would give it a name other than its real name. Then I asked, Is it not the month of Duhul Hijjah? We replied in the affirmative. He asked, Which city is this? We replied, Allah and his messenger know better. He remained silent until we thought that he would give it another name. He, peace be upon him, asked, Is it not Al-Balda, Makkah? We said, Yes. He, peace be upon him, asked, What day is this? We said, Allah and his messenger know better. He, peace be upon him, remained silent until we thought that he would give it another name. He asked, Is it not the day of an Nahar, the sacrifice? We replied in the affirmative. Thereupon he said, Your blood, your property, and your honor are inviolable to you, all like the inviolability of this day of yours. In this city of yours, and in this month of yours, you will soon meet your Rub. You will soon meet your Rub. And he will ask you about your deeds. So again, a judgment. So do not turn to disbelief after me, striking the necks of one another. Behold, let him who is present here convey this message to him who is absent. For many, a person to whom a message is conveyed has more retentive memory than the one who hears it. He again said, Have I conveyed the message to you? Behold, have I conveyed the commandment of Allah to you, we submitted, yes. He then said, O oh Allah, bear witness to this, Buhari and Muslim. Okay, so that was by Abu Bakr. Okay, time has completed his cycle. The three of them consecutive months, so Duhul Kada, Duhul Hijjah, and Muharram and Rajab, the month of Mundar tribe, which comes between Jumada and Shaban. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Let's see the commentary. I eat some spicy food. Whew, it's like making me all hot. Very spicy. The cycle of years and months, that is to say, a month consists of 30 or 29 days, and a year has 12 months, was completed at the time of creation of heavens and earth. The Hadith mentions the sanctity of life, property, respect, and honor of each Muslim for the other and lays stress upon the importance of this bond on them. Okay. Sanctity of life, property, respect, honor, the importance of this bond. Today, you have to watch out because we have a lot of communist, populist, leftists in the universities who are really railroading against private property rights and demonize people who seek to protect their property as in a store from looters or their property from trespassers and rioters and protesters. So we as Muslims, if we look at this, we shouldn't join those mobs who then destroy the property of another Muslim in order to protest the government. That's something interesting. It makes me think of that. I'm going to think of this when someone tells me, hey, let's go riot, let's go protest. And it's like if you know there's a Muslim shop there and you chuck rocks into it and you loot it and you're a Muslim, you have done a great crime because the government doesn't care that you do that. But that business owner sure does. Wow. It reminds that everyone will be answerable for his actions on the day of requital. 
day of requital. It urges that one should not just keep to oneself the commandments of Allah. So not just keeping it to oneself and his prophet's teachings, but to disseminate them among others also. So this is interesting. So once we learn some of the commandments and the teachings, we need to disseminate it. And the method you do that, you know, I heard Juhaini, the Sheikh on scholarly subtitles say that you need to shift your dawah to the relevant moment. So if you're in a position of giving dawah to somebody, you look, how is this happening? What kind of dawah is appropriate for this time? You know, there's a time and a place, essentially. And the way in which you go about it can have a huge positive impact. Because it might be exactly what that person needs to hear at that moment, right? It is quite possible that someone who remembers these teachings more adheres to them more in practice. Okay, excellent. MashaAllah. Abu Umama, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah decrees the hellfire and debars Jannah for the one who usurps the rights of a believer by taking a false oath. Okay, so, decrees the hellfire and debars Jannah for the one who usurps the rights of a believer by taking a false oath. So, someone giving a false testimony that leads to someone having something taken away. One man asked, O Messenger of Allah, even if it should be for an insignificant thing, he said, even if it be a stick of the Arak tree, i.e. the tree from which miswak sticks are taken, Muslim. Wow, so it's not just, you know, something like a stock portfolio, a huge contract, even something as small as a, as a stick used for the miswak. Commentary. The importance of rights of people is evident from the threat of severe punishment that this hadith holds for the usurpers of these rights. Their case will depend entirely on the will of Allah. Such defaulters may be forgiven even in the initial stage or they may be pardoned by Allah after some punishment. Okay. So some may be pardoned. And some may be forgiven in the initial stage. Okay, so the importance of the rights of the people. MashaAllah. Definitely have to remember that. Make sure that we are not usurpers. It's definitely not something that we want to do. Conveying the commandments and rulings. MashaAllah. All right. Was great. Hope you learned something. I'm gonna go probably drink some milk because my mouth is literally on fire from cayenne pepper.